up, everyone? Coach Rob. Coach Ali. Good morning. How are we all doing this morning? Ready to put in some work or what? We got coffee and curls this morning. A little strip down action for you. No big deal, you know. Entertainment for this morning, <laughs> right? Eugene, all the rain. All the rain, okay? Like, Holy you know, moly. We're back into like a week of this stuff. I don't know. I haven't really watched the weather, but... I just seem to wake up every day to gray, cloudy, and rain at the moment. But we make our own sunshine, right? Yep. All right. Yep. So today's workout, uh, coffee and curls. We're, we have two parts, part A, part B. Part A is a warm-up. Part B is a lower body burner today. Uh, part A, we're really going to work on loosening up the hips, the lower body, hamstrings, quadriceps, all that good stuff. Part B, um, we're gonna do some partner stuff back and forth, but also exercises that you can uh, do on your own. So we're gonna be creative and playful and fun today. Um, we're gonna play with a med ball in some of it. Uh, you can simulate with a backpack, um, you know, really any kind of weight or load that you have. Uh, you can take a pillowcase and, um, you know, fill that up with something. Uh, so, you know, just get creative, uh, make your own household items. Um, you know, Allie and I opened a gym a few years ago, and to be honest, uh, we didn't um, open that health club or that gym with, um, you know, the most support or resources. So where you lack resources, you make up with resourcefulness, right? So creativity, make your own equipment. Um, you know, uh, our first gym opening together, we made most of our equipment. We made it out of uh, items from Home Depot, concrete, plumbing pipe, buckets, and whatever we could find. Uh, and, and to be honest, um, uh, it was probably our most successful era as well. It created a culture of um, uh, real uh, objectivity versus, um, you know, subjectivity, right? So. Uh, what does that even mean? Well, listen, uh, practical application, you know, um, does this stuff relate to everyday life? Are you developing your functionality? Um, and are you getting closer to your goals? Maybe, maybe that goal is just to look better naked. Hey, if that's it for you, hats off, right? Uh, let's try to develop some functionality along the way, though. Okay. Yep. All right, let's get into this. Enough talking for today. I lie about that part. I'm gonna talk for the next hour. Yeah, he talks. But I talk too, move. but I let him talk. I just. All right, I'm gonna grab one more sip of coffee here before uh, we. Do yeah. yeah, 40 seconds, right? 20. Woo! We're gonna need the coffee on this work, one, baby. 40 seconds of work. 20 seconds of rest. Let's burning. get up and start getting ready. Who's on here? Carol Murray, what's up? Fish player, I see you out there. Miss you, man. Miss that energy of the boxing group. Jessica Lynn is on. Hi, yeah, Jessica. what's up, Jess? How are you? That's right. I know you're busy. We got the crew out uh, there. Hi, Ann. Ann Good Lee, morning, what's Ann up? Lee. Excited mm -hmm. to get Thank back. You. We've got oh. some. We've got some fun <laughs> news that we're going to release today. So, um, really exciting news coming down the pipeline. So, you know, um, uh, big news has come out this morning. Reopenings happening and such. Uh, we also want to make sure that we are absolutely as safe as we as we can possibly be. Uh, you know, in the Lane County, exactly. I think we were probably the first to shut down, take proactive measures. Uh, once we got the data and we've seen the results, um, we made the educated decisions that we want to move forward. But at the same time, we want to make sure, number one, our staff and our employees are safe and uh, cared for. Through this process, so we are still waiting on some personal protection gear to arrive so we can supply all the goods for our people, uh, as well as um, sanitation uh, e equipment. We've ordered the highest, um, uh, really the high, high end of sanitation, fogging machines and such, um, you know, thermal body scanners, all the good stuff. So we are prepared. So. Uh, I'm not going to say when, I know everybody's asking for Friday, but, um, you know, later this afternoon and tomorrow you guys will all be receiving information, so hang yeah. tight. Hang tight. That way you come back to our social media now. But for real, seriously. Yep. Joking, okay. but not joking. Why don't we get warmed up? You guys ready? Let's do it. Okay. All right, number one is an inchworm with rotation. What we're looking on is to hinge in the hips, 
and move backwards versus rounding in the back and coming down. So I really want you to maintain spinal integrity as you reach back as far as you can. Soft bend in the knees, so minimal knee flexion, maximal hip flexion in this process. Maintaining that lumbar curve, chest up, neutral spine in the neck. So we're not cranking the neck looking forward. We're looking down, we're stretching those ham hamstrings. And with a nice flat back, find your end range. Once you're at that end range and you can't reach any further, you do one of two things. Either you bend in the knees just a little bit, maintaining that uh, structural integrity in the spine, find those fingers and walk them out. Or a little bit of rounding in this position is fine if you really need it to find the floor. So let's get into this and I'll start talking you through uh, the movements as we get moving. Again, 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest, one minute in between each round, and we're gonna move for four rounds on this warm up. Here we go. You ready? Yes, 20 seconds. Easy body weight movements. We got this. Right. Toes on the line. She's got great new shoulder rest. I'll show you in between, so be ready. All right. Here we go. Five seconds. So, inchworms, hinge those hips back. Find your fingers to the floor. Feel the stretch in those hamstrings. Find your palms as quickly as you can. Come all the way out. Now from here, we're gonna rotate right hand up and look up. Feel the stretch through your left side, so turn your shoulder into it. Feel it into your elbow and your bicep with that stretch. Even up into the uh, upper chest, the right side. Bring it back down. Let's rotate to the left. All the way up, open it up. And lower down and walk it back. All the way up, one more. We're gonna move a little quicker on this one. All the way out, rotate. Let's add a push up into it. Oh up gosh. and rotate. A little sore from the other day, baby. From this Come on back. 20 seconds. Number two is a cat cow. Most of us know this. Down into a tabletop position. Wrist under your elbows, elbows under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Neutral spine in the back. Right from here. We're going to work through breathing patterns. Inhale, exhale through your nose. Inhale through your nose and arch up like a cat. And exhale, lowering down and looking up like a cow. And inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose as you're looking and arching or swaying. And inhale, arch back up. And take it at your own pace as now we're getting for reps. About a three second hold at each point at the top and at the bottom, and lower back down. Again, you're taking it at your paces, working through that breathing. And inhale, and exhale. Okay, next exercise, we're moving into loaded beast and deep lunge. So loaded beast, we're on our knees, now find your toes underneath of you, in that tabletop, and raise your knees one inch off the ground. Right from here, you're gonna push back into full flexion of the ankles, toes, ankles, knees, and uh, hips. Right from here, we're gonna take our right leg and we're gonna spring it forward into a deep lunge. Right leg comes up and forward. Right from here, we're gonna bring that right leg back. We're gonna load up the beast again. Look, take your gaze forward to your hands. Spring forward with your left leg. Good, nice deep lunge. And bring it back. Spring back, load back. Here we go, spring. This time, rotate right hand up, and down, and back. Load it up, left leg, left hand up, and back. Load it, forward right, rotate right, down. We're gonna finish this one, left, go, and rotate, and back. Excellent work out there. All right, next is a high kick, mule kick. Go ahead and stand up, feet under your hips, Left hand up in the air, left hand. Right leg to balance. Take your right foot, kick to your left. Now take your right foot through, touch your hand, switch your legs. Right hand up, left foot, kick. Come all the way through, touch your toe. Other hand goes up, other foot, kick, touch. Up, kick, down. Switch, kick, down. Trying to keep those legs pretty straight and stiff. Use the knees to cushion spinal integrity. Switch sides, left hand, right foot. Left hand touches left foot. Stretch that hamstring. Switch, right hand up, left foot, kick. 
Right hand touches the right foot. Nice work out there. Short little rest, we're gonna take a minute here. Move into our second round. So that was round one, a little bit slower. We're gonna to start to uh, pick up the paces a little bit as we move through this next round. So let's be ready to work. Hi, we'll, Amy. Good morning, Sarah. We'll increase the uh, intensity as we move. I may just decrease. I don't, <laughs> the goal is always to ramp up the intensity as we move, right? Start a little bit lighter, find your paces, find your body, and then start to pick up the paces as we move. All right, inchworm with rotation. We're gonna move a little quicker on these this round, okay? We're gonna walk them out, rotate, push up, rotate, walk it back. Let's try to get maybe five reps. Are we ready? Three, two, one, hinge back, walk it out. Rotate, right, lower. I forgot my push up. Rotate left, walk it back. Reach up. Come back down, hands back, walk it out. Rotate, push up in between, rotate, walk it back. Hands up, down. Good, rotate right, push up, rotate left, walk it back. Reach, down. Rotate right. Push up and finish every set. Come on. That was the bell. Don't worry about it. Up, reach, pow. Okay, cat cow is next. Pretty simple one here. Knees under the hips, wrist under the elbows, elbows under the shoulders. Pits of the elbows roll forward. External rotation in the shoulders. Wind up stability. Now, inhale and arch up like a cat. Through your nose. Exhale through your nose. Looking up. Inhale through your nose, arch. Exhale through your nose, and inhale, and exhale. Take it at your paces now. You need to hold a little longer, hold a little longer. Try to follow that breathing now. Match it up with your breathing. So your movement aligns. End range at the last little bit of that inhale in the arch, and end range at the last little bit of the exhale. Beautiful work. Okay, we push back. Now, in this one, you find your toes underneath of you. Okay, find your toes, sit back on it. I kind of curl them up, okay? Find that tabletop, hands above. Let's walk it out about four to six inches, okay? We're gonna take it out a little bit extended this time. Lift those knees off the ground. Load back into the toes, ankles, and knees. Spring forward with your right leg. Rotate right hand. Down, left, right leg goes back. Left leg springs forward. Rotate left hand. Good, bring it back, load it up. Right leg, right hand, down. Load it, left leg, left hand, down. Good, lower, right and right, boom. Come on, strong, let's draw it now. Let's move through some reps. Get that mobility in, open the hips, open the knees, get the coordination going. Agility, accuracy, balance, coordination, flexibility, stability equals mobility. Boom, nice work out there. 20 second rest. Now we move back up to the high kick mule lunge, or mule kick. So right hand, the leg stays stiff. Maximal hip flexion, minimal knee. Means you only bend that knee to cushion. It shouldn't be fully locked. Okay, so you kick, come down and touch. Switch hands, left hand, right foot. I kick, stretch that hamstring on that left leg. Right hand up, left leg, kick, touch. Switch, kick, touch. Use both hands if you need it. Kick, touch. Kick, touch. Nice work. Come on, let's push the base now. Oh, wrong hand. Wrong foot. I don't know. I switch here. <laughs> that whole coordination, accuracy, agility, balance thing. Those are all neural, muscular, neurological skills. I can't hit a damn ball, ball off a t-ball stand, so I got like all those skills. That's why I like to physically grab people. Yeah. Like this. Or like this. Or like this. That's yeah, what I like that too, though. You know? All right. So we have a one-minute rest in between these rounds, so I'm kind of milking the time for a second here. OK. 
casually Once that part B starts, constructive. You're going to be wanting the rest. What are y'all doing out there? Are you just drinking coffee or are you actually doing the curls? <laughs> What's up, Anthony Hale? I can't wait to get back and see Good you for some tattoo therapy. Ada. Hi. Tattoos are essential. Good morning, okay, Irma. let me tell you. Good to see you guys on here. I love it. We when got you, Medford in the house. When we you got have some a, California, Arizona. Define essential, you know? Yes. Define essential. Yes. Jay, what's up? Good morning. I've got my maintenance dude getting everything prepared here okay. for the club to open. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start working on that next round. How are we feeling? All right, because once this part B starts, you guys are going to be wanting the rest. <laughs> I'm sore from those push-ups on Tuesday still. All right, almost. All right, let's get this back into it. Okay, here we go. Inch Inch sure time is on. Go ahead and start. Hinge those hips back. Here we go. Walk it up. Rotate right, push up, rotate left, walk it back. Reach up, good, let's move. Keep the control, keep that tension though. Don't move so fast that you're losing tension. You can't feel the stretches throughout. I think you're moving too quick. Slow it down. I think my little miss here might be moving a little too fast. I don't like it. She likes to try to be the hair in this game and fight the tortoise over here. <laughs> here we go. Feel right. that stretch. Good. We're moving to cat cows now, so real simple. On the knees, knees under the hips, wrists under the elbows, elbows under the shoulders. External rotation over the pits of the elbows forward. Inhale and arch your back up into a cough. And exhale, let's go through the mouth. Looking up into your cup. Inhale, arch up into your cup. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Take it at your own paces now. Nice work out there. All right, so this one, loaded beast into the deep lunge. That same cat-cow position. Walk it forward just a couple inches. Find the toes underneath of your feet, roll back into them. Lift the knees one inch off the ground. Right from here, we're gonna spring forward with our right leg first, and into a deep lunge. Rotate right hand up, down, back, load it up. Forward, that left foot should be just outside of the left hand. So load it back, and forward. Rotate. Good. Here we go. All my jujitsu people out there gonna be wanting to come back and live roll. Uh -uh. Get your body working first, okay? You've been sitting all tight. You are injury prone. Good way to stunt your jujitsu um, life cycle, right there. Don't move for two months. Come back. Go to live roll. That would be the worst thing you could do for yourself. Same with your, your fitness if you haven't been training. Don't come back with full intensity. Be smart. Gauge it. High kick, heel kick. Left hand up. Right foot in the balance. I kick to that hand. And I go on a stiff leg. I kind of like teeter here now, right? I switch. Right hand, left foot up. Right hand kick. Touch. Move at your pace. The balance in there. Was that three? That was three rounds? Three. One more round. One more round. Short little rest. We'll stay on time on this one. Hopefully I don't take on any maintenance projects in between on my rest break, you know. <laughs> All I like to do. What else can we do? What else can we do? 
Yeah. One more round here. Be ready to work. What are we all doing out there? Hi, Ada. What's up? Aw, so good Who's to on? see you guys. What do we got here? I like to play with all the okay. silly phone apps and, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. Let's put it in there. Okay, let's get back to it. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Who's ready to work ready? again? Yeah, yeah, make sure I get you okay. in. Okay. All right. Ten seconds. Last round. All right, hinge those hips back. Maximal hip flexion, minimal knee. Find your fingers, find your palms, walk it out. Rotate right. Push up. Rotate left. Walk it back. Reach it up. Hips it back. Well, time needs a little off. I'm not even find that timer there. We'll get back on. Good. 20 seconds. Walk it back. Reach it up. One more. Walk it out. Rotate. Push up. Rotate. Walk it back. Reach it up. Reach. Arch. 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 And head. Just hand. Yeah. All right. Find your knees to the ground. Knees underneath of your hips. Wrist under your elbows. Elbows under your shoulders. External rotation of the shoulders, roll the hips and the elbows forward. Inhale, arch up into the cow. Exhale through your mouth. Look up into your cow. Inhale through your nose. Fill it up. And exhale through your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And take it at your paces. I'm gonna hold a little longer, get a little movement in the shoulders. Hips, shoulders, the rotation, the twist, torque, movement, opening everything up. Find some individual stuff that you need to work on, baby. I'm gonna lean back into it, lean into the shoulders. No problem. All right, right from here. Toes are underneath of you. You're gonna push back onto those toes. Think you're good here. Okay, you're gonna raise the knees one inch off the ground. Right from here, we're gonna spring our right foot forward first into a deep lunge, just outside of the right hand. Rotate the right hand up, and switch. Forward, rotate. Load up into full flexion when you go back. Load those toes, ankles, knees, and hips, and extend that trail leg as you come forward. Really open up that hip flexor, that trail leg. Almost there, 10 seconds. Stay with me, y'all. Rotate, come on. Last one. Balance it out. Nice work. Okay, right from here, high kick, dual kicks. Last one of these. So, we go. Balance on your left leg, right foot's off the ground. Left hand in, into the air. Kick. Touch the ground straight leg. Switch. Touch. Here we go. How we all feeling out there? Amazing. Got the sweat going now. Feeling good. My chest is finally loosening up on Tuesday. Man, I was so sore. Still sore. Me too. Who's feeling it from Tuesday? If you did that workout, probably feeling that chest burner, push up, shoulders. Nice work out there. Woo! Catch that breath. Got about a minute here. So now we move into part B. A little more of the strength side. You know, again, we're going lighter still. We're working with minimalist equipment household items you know today we're gonna play with a med ball um, you know might even throw a backpack into this you know mix it up a little bit if you've got some dumbbells out there grab them so four exercises it's a squat thruster if you have a partner it's gonna be a squat toss thruster so what I call a squat toaster 
uh, into Bulgarian split squats. So we need one box. Ali, would you mind grabbing one of those boxes for us? Um, Bulgarian split squats, power skaters, and alternating one leg deadlift, okay? So uh, squat thruster, if you have a bag, you're gonna take your feet out to hip width or whatever your alignment is for your squats to make sure you're maintaining um, uh, proper integrity in the knees and the hips. So we wanna watch what's known as a valgus collapse in those hips. So as we're squatting down, the big thing is, not necessarily I hear all this stuff about feet rotation and you know, you gotta squat, can't squat your knees over your toes. Okay, hogwash. Knees can go over the toes. Number two, most important, knee tracks over the second toe, okay? So whether if it's a knees out cue, maybe that cue is effective for somebody that has more of a valgus collapse, but maybe somebody that's more vargus or like the term bow-legged may need to pull a little more valgus and neutralize it and balance it out. But the key is no matter where those feet are rotating, obviously in a perfect world, if we can get our feet straight forward, that's awesome, but everybody has different anatomy and structure and mobility going on. So you need to move within your proper ranges of where you're at today. So those toes turn out to say one o'clock and 11 o'clock, no problem. Key is kneecap or patella tendon tracking over the second toe and maintaining that upright chest posture, right? Thoracic extension as we raise all the way up. Trying to drop that hip crease below parallel. So as Allie squats, she squats. That hip crease drops below the top of the kneecap is the ideal position. But again, go within your range of motion. If your limits only allow you to move two inches down, then that's what it is. Maintain that structural integrity of movement, most important. So squat thruster, she will hold the bag. She's gonna hit a squat all the way down. She's holding up at about chest level and then she's gonna press it up above head. And start to push her head through at the top so we have full stacking extension. But we don't want to drive that head forward and forward head. We want it to be pretty neutral. Now, as she's going down, she's pull, absorbing it all down into gravity as she, into her flexion as she comes down in the bottom like a spring, and then drives it up nice and controlled and lowers down all joints, break simultaneously and cushion at the bottom and move right back out. Don't worry about that pause. We'll just move for some reps back and forth. So if you have a partner, take a step back, take a little step back. We'll step back. Okay, right there, she's gonna squat, she's gonna toss. I'm gonna try to catch in the bottom of flexion. So go ahead, move, toss it up. Oh! oh. <laughs> Little accuracy action in there, good. That's our squat thruster or squat toaster. Bulgarian split squat, so now he's gonna hang on to this bag. She's gonna go one leg up onto the box. She's gonna take a step out about 12 to 18 inches away. If you have a couch, use your couch. Right from here, she's gonna lower down. Just hang on to it at rack position. So you just go down as, as close as you can without um, straining the knees or the hips. If you're feeling any pain, it's too low. Uh, knee tracking over the second toe on that lead leg, not collapsing in. And uh, kneecap aligning with the edge of the toes as you're coming forward. So that'll help you dictate how far out you are. So if your knee is too far forward in that ankle, right, you may want to take a step further out, right? Perfect. Bulgarian split squats. We'll go on one leg for one round. We'll go on the next leg for the other round. So we'll stay on the single leg for the entire 40 seconds. Number two is a power skater. Allie's going to hang out of that bag. Now she lowers down into a single leg squat, holding this up but that leg's going back, so lowers all the way down. She's gonna jump for maximal height. Doesn't matter where she lands. In fact, I don't even want her to jump lateral, okay? I want her to jump up and land on the other leg. And lower into that single leg squat and power jump out. If you wanna go with no weight, that's absolutely great too. It's, these are tough, okay? So you wanna take your paces. Now, don't worry, you want this rest. Last one is an alternating one-legged deadlift, so I hang on to this bag. And again, I'm gonna go maximal hip, minimal knee, kind of like we did on the mule kicks. And I'm just gonna lower down to the ground, so hold at whatever range you need to hold your bag. And right from here, I'm gonna lower, touch the foot. Really keep the shoulders and the hips square so I'm not rotating as I'm lowering down. And I'm alternating. Stiff leg. So we're really keeping that leg stiff. You may have a slight bend in the knee just to cushion, so you're not at a full lockout, 
but you're really feeling the tension in the hamstring by driving those hips back and creating like a slingshot effect on the hamstring, loading it up with more tension. So we're gonna replace our bag with a med ball on some of this. Um, we have a couple of them over here. So again, use whatever items you want. All right. It's like going back to school with Coach Piper here, you know? Yeah, we get we school on, and workout. It's so good, though. Let's get this. Sorry, I talk a lot. Uh, it's good, though. Here, good coach. here to give you a fish, or sorry, a fishing pole and not just a fish. All right, All right. All right. here we go. So we start with squat toasters. Take a step back. We're both in. Good. Oh, here we go. Get that extra squat in if you have a partner, squat with them. because I have a torn ACL. So it's good for me to work on my stability, but it's a little more challenging. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Maybe he should go in the front the next time. Nice work out there. <laughs> Alternating one leg down there. after this round. All right, two, one. Alternating legs. I think a lot of this too. Keep those shoulders pulled back. Is your gaze looking where you're going instead of up. Yeah. You know? Make sure you're not cranking in that neck when I'm going down. Notice how I look down and look at you. Keep those shoulders pulled back. You're not rounding in the shoulders. Nice. Good contracted upper back. The muscles in between your shoulder blades. The prime movers are your rhomboids. Let's keep the scapula, the shoulder blades pulled back. Chicken wings, right? Okay. So, turn around that way. The muscles that kind of create this, um, uh, Pentagon shape in between the shoulder blades. Help keep these back. A, pull them back, so they work pulling motions. They also keep the posture intact so that we're not in this rounding forward, forward, position forward. So 
So I always talk about imaginary pencil in between the shoulder blades. Kind of slight contraction on that pencil. She pinches my finger and then slight release. So once you're in those positions and you have to hold that, that's what you're trying to really focus on maintaining versus releasing and rounding. All right, we're gonna get back to it. Make sure we're on with the timer. We got our squat thruster. You got 20 seconds when the bell rings. So grab that sip of water. We're gonna push this next round again. 15 seconds. Hydration, key element, all right? Especially right now, you guys about to enter the war zone again. Make sure we're building that immunity back up. Allie and I are about to embark on a challenge coming up here. Take a step back, Allie. Good. Oh, I missed that squat. That's all right. I'll sandbag it. The challenge we're about to go on is a total superfood organic bio reset. All the highest quality foods that we possibly consume, including our hydration, for the next 40 days. Beginning next Monday, we're looking to take a little crew of people on this journey with us. If you know anything about the two of us, once we set goals, we hit them. We hit them physically. Whether that's with ourselves first. Oh, oh shit! Uh oh. Yeah, that Water's was an ass still. bomb. As my water spilled we'll everywhere. Clean it after. No big deal. We got our workout to do. Bulgarian split squats. That's that hydration thing. You know? Spill the important thing that I need today. You can have some of mine. So, left, what did we have last? We had right leg forward. We'll go left leg forward, right foot up. Alright. There we go. Anyway. So this challenge that we're going to go on, Ali and I work with very select uh, clients with nutrition, lifestyle. We work through essential elements for lifestyle, to be nutrition, breath, movement, restoration, and your hydration. Let's throw mindset in there as well. Right? What's your mind at entering this? Goal setting. How you're holding yourself accountable. Yep. All right, we've got power skaters next. You go. Oh boy. Yep. I'm not better at it. <laughs> I'm old and broken at this oh, point. Whatever. Here we go. Opposite hand power jump. Power. Oop, I'm a gut foot in the face. That's why I don't want to go in front of you. I'll be the one that kicks her in the face. No. I can move around. Find that stability. Power out. It's not a race for reps. Race for height. For power. There we go. 20 seconds. Alternating one leg is that good. Stiff leg, not locked, but stiff. Total mile breather right now. Feeling that? If you're feeling that, work through your nose. Try to get it back in through the nose, in and out. Sometimes that double intake of an air, of a breath, We'll help you stabilize it. Then a hard exhale. Short little inhales. Oh, and then blow it out. It'll help you re-regulate the breath. Okay. Short little rest. Five seconds. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was our last exercise. It's not five seconds. Right. We have a rest break. Here we go. That's 20 seconds. What are you doing? That was our alternating one leg deadlift, oh Allie. We have a one minute rest. <laughs> Never trust your trainer. Oh. 
and their timing oh, or their reps. Okay, they make all that shit up, all right? So don't trust any of them. <laughs> I'm like, hey, coach, time. how much time we got left? Uh, one minute, coach. <laughs> we're only on a one minute time work period. We've been working for a minute. One minute. All right. All right. Third round, we got two more rounds to go. Get ready. Two more rounds. Squat tosses for a thruster. We got 20 seconds, hang tight. So, so squat this thruster. challenge coming up, you guys, it's gonna be really awesome, really building your immunity. It's We're gonna so start important. accepting um, the applications for it, essentially. <laughs> we wanna work with select people that, that truly, are wanna, serious. truly wanna change your lives. Yep. We need some All testimonials. Right. Here we Is that go. you? Okay. Take a step back. Step back, please. Good. Step back. Yeah, it's all up in my grill. She's trying to do like Nice work out there. Bulgarian split squats next. Sixteen reps on that round. Brutal. Into these power skaters is tough. This is the combo right here. Gets brutal in between these two. Opposite hand to opposite foot. And then we're gonna power skater out of that. Straight up. Not about lateral direction so much as it is about powering out of the hole into it. Into extension, absorbing and flexion. Flexion and extension, flexion, extension, power out. Use the hips to drive you out. Your glutes are the power point. They're gonna drive that dynamic hip extension. Oh, sorry. <laughs> dynamic to the point of being violent, okay? Certain sport, it may just be violent. All right. Violent effort, what's that mean? Still under control, precision, as much power as you can possibly put into it. Alternating one leg is that good? Final movement. Here we go. Wet like crazy. Woo! One round after this. Almost there, peeps. Hang tight, stay strong. Dig deep, push your way through. One minute rest. Time, 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 time. How we doing out there? Feeling this round, man. Who we got? Who's on? Dory, what's up? Ada, Shirley, what's up all you beast out there? That's definitely sweat just running. So if you're on this one, E5, 
If you see Rob Half, he's on Instagram <laughs> on E5. So a lot of people. We've got two like, screens right now. Here? We've got Facebook Live going, Instagram Live. If you haven't checked us out on Instagram, please do so. If you're on Facebook, likewise on Instagram. If you're Instagram peeps, follow us on Facebook. Facebook, you have to like and follow the page. Follow means that you get notifications to our live videos as they come up. That's how you get those notifications. So make sure you click follow. 20 seconds, this is our last set. Now we want to at least mode it over here, step it up. Take a step back, please. Right about there, good. Now we call it my grill on these. I'm like, I can't squat. Where's your squat? Oh, this one is sweaty. Oh, we could have been using it. Sweaty bottles. Oh, the walls, the snow drop down on medicine balls. What is happening here? Oh, I know. I'm sorry. I'm an adult. We're adults. You know when that song comes on, every Karen in the joint jumps up and starts breaking it down. <laughs> it's so funny. Adulting. Yep. Bust out that box of wine. Busting out that box of wine to the walls to the sweat drop down my med. Uh, um, okay. Stupid like that. Yeah, stupid. Okay, here we go. Bulgarian split squats. Last set. Why we'll that thruster into it? The top. Nice and controlled. I'm trying to touch my knee to get that extra quad strength at the end. So I'm taking a little bit slower. A little bit of mobility work into it. But keeping tension. I may touch the knee, but it's just a fraction of a second. Right back up. Keeping the time under tension, the load, carry through your body, not distribute onto the ground. Nice work. All right, the brutal one, right in the power skaters. Here we go. One leg, you're gonna touch the hand to your toe, and we power out of that. Looking for height, hip extension at the top. Flexion to the bottom, power out. Try to extend all three joints, what we call triple extension. Ankles, knees, and hips all extend. Triple extension will drive your power. And you'll transfer that power from your calves, into your quads, into your glutes. And you're absorbing as you come down in those hamstrings, anterior tibialis, the front of your shin. If you've had shin splints, it's because the front of your shin is weak and your calves are too tight. Okay, the back of your legs, too tight. Back here. The front, not strong enough, not stable enough. That's where the shin splints come from. So if you have shin splints, you're probably also somebody that has plantar fasciitis. If you don't, you will at some point. They connect. Alternating deadlifts, last step. Here we go. All right, so if you ever work with me, a couple things you're gonna hear me lecture on quite a bit is the mobility in your shoulders and the mobility in your hips. Those are our rotational joints, right? They move in all sorts of different directions, ball and socket. Whereas your elbows and your knees are known as the dummy joints. They, they just go two ways. It's like Barbie doll, dummy joint, okay? Goes one way, 
Not, and, and that's it, no rotation in that joint, right? Wrist, rotation in there as well. So if you have elbow or knee pain, it's held hostage to either your wrist and shoulder or your ankle and hip. More often than not, it travels downstream. So the problems travel downstream, not up. So shoulder problem ultimately becomes the elbow or the wrist problem. The knee problem or ankle problem is typically a hip problem. So think about that. A couple key points. Um, think of your the front of your legs. Stand up for me, Ali. Your quadriceps as your gas pedal. Your quadriceps and your calves, okay? So let me just tie this together real quick. I'm gonna give you a quick breakdown. Our body pushes, it pulls, and it rotates, all right? Those are our three essential um, uh, categories of movement, okay, in our joints. So our body ties together like a DNA strand. It wraps through each joint structure, okay? So your pushing chain will go through the joint and we'll come around the back side or front side or whatever and it's gonna weave back and forth, okay? Kind of creates this like DNA strand is what I envision with this, all right? Starts in your uh, limbs and works its way into the core or actually the other way around technically, but we're gonna start at the feet and work our way up. So start from the foundation. And I won't get into all the good stuff in the feet necessarily, like arches, really complex in the feet, but I'm gonna start with above the ankles. So Allie, turn to the side. So if you look at her calves, imagine that cutting through the knee to the quadriceps up into the hips, okay? The calves accelerate us forward. They move us forward, all right? So calves and, or move us upward, all right? Uh, through that joint extending, okay? There's a whole musculature that plays into that, but when the ankle extends, the calf contracts, all right? When the knee extends, the quad contracts. Those are our lower body pushing, primary pushing muscle groups, all right? Now that's gonna cut through that hip joint into that lumbar. Now a lot of people think lower back when I deadlift or whatever, no, not the case, all right? Hamstrings when you deadlift and upper back and core, your abdominals, all right? Core is a term that's really loosely thrown around. I think of this entire structure, I'll come back to that in a second. So quads cut through the lumbar. Lumbar cuts through the lats into the pecs or the chest, which come into the anterior delts or the front of your shoulders. Traps, cutting through to our triceps, to the top of our forearms. So as we're in this like loaded position and we're pressing out, and we're pushing here, this portion of our forearm is gonna really um, come into contraction. As we push up above head and we're pushing, it's coming through the anterior delts into the triceps in contraction that extends that joint, all right? So our pushing muscles, when they contract, they extend a joint. So this tricep, when it contracts, make it tight. Contraction extends the elbow, okay? Now, let's take this downstream, all right? So let's go, when Allie pulls, you ever notice when you do a row and your wrist bends, you get that little cheat rep in there? That Popeye part of your forearm, okay? I don't have those anymore. That's your pulling portion of, of that forearm, all right? Now that portion is then gonna wrap through to the bicep. The bicep is gonna come through to the back of the shoulder into the upper back of the rhomboids. The rhomboids cut through, think of the base of the rib cage as that joint cutting through to the rectus abdominis or the abdominals, your abs, your core, your beauty core, right? Cutting through to the hamstrings. Hamstrings cutting through the knee to the front of the shin. As I was talking about earlier, the anterior tibialis. Pull your foot up into flexion, ankle into flexion. When she pulls her toe up, that's the front of her shin or anterior tib tibialis is contracting, pulling the ankle into flexion, okay? So your pulling muscles, when they contract, pull the joint into flexion, right? Pulling muscle pulls that foot up into ankle flexion. Now, hamstring, as she raises, it, bends her knee, think of the hamstring as the bicep of the leg, right? The bicep of the leg. As this contracts, it, it raises this bottom portion of the limb or the tibia, pulls from contraction in the hamstring, okay? That contraction, right? Now, abdominals, when we're pulling into, you know, like a crunch, right? Crunch, do a little crunch, right? So if she were laying down, it would be lifting her legs because it's creating this, what we call a hollow body position, okay? That hollow body position. Now, um, 
The prime muscle that I haven't touched on, as we know, is the largest muscle in the body, the strongest muscle in the body. On Instagram, it's definitely the most glorious muscle on the body, <laughs> and it's over accentuated with fake low back sways. Okay, we won't talk about that too much, the Instagram posturing, posing. I see all you out there. Just don't do the duck lips. Duck lips with the pose is weird, okay? Don't do that, just do the, all right, weird. <laughs> now, uh, the glutes are your primary mover. So I think of the hips, I always talk about the bucket of water, all right? Most common postural deviation in the hips is known as an anterior pelvic tilt, or this sway back, right? Or Instagram booty back, okay? That's gonna cause a lot of tension in that lower back, the L4, L5, and lumbar compression. Now lumbar, I talked about earlier, is a pushing muscle, not a puller, okay? So as that pulls up, it's really gonna tighten up the hip flexors, okay? When your hip flexors are overly tight, it shuts down the glute medius. So you cannot drive the power that you need from your glute if you have low back compression. Now that low back compression can also come from a series of other things in the hips, from the psoas, which is internal musculature uh, to stabilize the hips in the lower back, to the hip flexors, and even some of the side pieces that cause rotation, like your TFLs in your hips, okay? Now, a um, couple pieces, I'm gonna finish with this. I think if you're um, overextended here, your hamstrings are overextended. It's almost like they're pulled to a weakened state. So remember this, a muscle is at its weakest state when it's at its most elongated or extended state or position, okay? So uh, jujitsu people, you get out into that arm bar, you are, <laughs> you're screwed here, okay? Uh, unless you're Gordon Ryan. Um, but in here, we're really tight in flexion, okay? So when we take it all the way out to full extension, we're at our weakest state. Now, think about that muscle with those hips are rotated up into that anterior pelvic tilt. That bucket of water, we're spilling water out of the front. So what's happening is these hip flexors are shutting down the glute medius. So you lose all like guard activity and strength and hip extension, your triangles and all that good stuff. Now the hamstrings are overly extended. So I think of it like driving around with your parking brake on, okay? You have, your hamstrings are your decelerator. So I talked about your quadricep as your accelerator, okay? You're driving around with your parking brake on if those hips are um, in that anterior pelvic tilt. So you're losing speed, you're losing power, you're losing velocity on that. Now, if your TFLs are tight, okay, it's a, the muscle right here on the side of the hip, that when you rotate your foot, rotate your foot outward and feel your hips. You're gonna feel that muscle move. Now, if your TFLs are tight and then your IT bands are tight, they're usually gonna work together. That's gonna cause your feet to turn out. Now, I'm, I'm, I imagine that as driving, here's my analogy, driving the car with crappy alignment. The, the steering wheel is just pulling over to two o'clock and you're having to manually correct the whole time you're driving and it's just wearing out your tires and your brakes 10 times as fast as it needs to. Um, so if you are one of those people, this guy over here, that turns those feet out, you're causing a lot of damage in the knees and, and all that good stuff. So the knees are like the tires on the car and they wear out really quick. And the, tar the, the tires are really your meniscus or the cartilage on the inside of the knees and you're ripping through that stuff. So if you have arthritis in the knees or patella tendonitis, um, if you have meniscus damage, that's from bad alignment, which is coming from the TFL, IT bands usually. And then that comes down into the posterior tibialis or the back of the calves. There's this nasty little point in the calf, okay? That uh, the lower portion of the calf is known as the soleus and the upper meat of it is the gastroc. So if you go on the inside back piece of the soleus and I reach inside here and I put a little finger in here, she's, I'm gonna cripple her, okay? Um, and that's that uh, posterior tibialis. And it, that piece is really gonna control a lot of the ankle stuff that happens. So if you have collapsed arches, plantar fasciitis and all that good stuff, that's coming from a connection. So if those feet are breaking down and you're feeling all that, that is that posterior tibialis connecting to the um, IT band. IT band shooting through to the psoas on the inside of your uh, core structure. Um, and then that's just throwing off all that alignment. So back to the game we played as a kid. What was it, doctor? My knee bone connects to my hip Operation. bone. Operation. Uh, my elbow bone connects to my shoulder bone or yeah. whatever. All right. Like Enough geeking out for today. Long lecture at the end of it. I saved it for the end. Hopefully you guys stuck on. 
Instagram is shooting me down to the 60 minute. I have 11 seconds on IG and we are going to take it all the way down, a five second countdown. We will see you next Tuesday and Thursday, 9.30. And we all coming back real soon. Let us know Later. about our, uh, our challenge coming up, you guys. Yeah, buddy. Yep, let us know. Talk to us if you're interested, if you wanna know about nutrition, lifestyle, um, how to manage your stress, uh, breath, nutrition, hydration, gut health, um, all of that stuff connects to it. So your nervous system and your gut is your second brain, okay? Take care of that brain because it's gonna take care of your cognitive brain. We're gonna cleanse. Take care of you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.